Hi, have you ever thought that it would be great to build something that you could control with your phone or computer? Well, I did. Sometimes it might be simple switching the power on and off, another time you may need more fine control, for example when playing with various LEDs. Also it's quite possible that one day you will like to use some motors, jacks or other mechanical components within a custom device or even a system of cooperating devices. Sounds complex and expensive? Actually it's not so bad as you think. In this video I will show you that you don't need a degree in electronics or computer science to add web browser control to most of the devices you may want to use for just a few bucks. Let's get started! Ok, but where actually should we start? Those things obviously can't talk to each other. Well, you need something in between. Something that is able to interact with physical world and software simultaneously. If you ever tried Arduino or similar technologies, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But in case you didn't, let me just briefly explain the idea. Such boards can run a program able to switch the power on most of those pins individually at any moment. On the other hand, it is able to communicate using USB, Wi-Fi or other popular interfaces, so it's a really useful bridge between digital and physical world. In our case, we just need a program that will communicate with web browser in our phone or PC and a switch activated by electric signal from relevant pin because the signal itself is too weak to power anything bigger than a small LED. There are several ways to do it, depending on what kind of power supply you are dealing with and what kind of device you want to use, but I will cover it a bit later, because right now you probably think, yeah, great advice Sherlock, just write a program for some odd electronics that will communicate with web browser in my phone. How am I supposed to do that? You just told that I don't need to be a programmer, don't worry, it's actually pretty easy when using proper tools. If you ever tried Arduino, you know that the core idea of this project is to abstract all the complexities of programming microcontrollers behind a simple set of functions so you don't need to dig through hundreds of pages of specific microcontroller datasheet and graduate a university to understand all the concepts inside it. All you need to do is write few simple commands, upload your code to a board you want to use, and that's it. You have an electric signal in real world that behaves exactly as you told it to. What about web browser? Recently I created a framework that is meant to deal with these kind of features, having in mind the same philosophy as Arduino. To keep it as simple as possible, so that you can start playing with it, just by watching these two quick tutorials. All the links are in the description if you're interested, so I won't get into details here, but let me just quickly show you how easy it is. You just need to start Stargate local server somewhere in your local network, open one of the examples from relevant Stargate library, type in your Wi-Fi credentials if you want to use board with Wi-Fi, and upload your code. Done! All the necessary magic will happen automatically, giving you lightning fast control over any gate value you declared in your code from any web browser you would like to use. So even if you're new to Arduino, it should take you only about half an hour to be able to add remote control from web browser to your project. But if you are already experienced, or maybe even a full-time programmer, Please note that there is much more this framework has to offer. There is a full set of tutorials here on my channel that covers most of functionalities of the system. On project landing page you can find even more information about it, including code examples and some sample projects utilizing Stargate. Besides, it's an open source software, so you can get its source code from GitHub, and as all the components run on your machines locally, you can modify them as much as you like. By the way, if you don't like to play coding yourself, but you need a feature that is not yet available, just drop a comment under any of my videos. I'm planning to grow this project over time, so any feedback like such will be valuable to me. 
and there is also a good chance that you will seamlessly get what you need. Okay, sounds like we have the programming issues of our heads, but which board to use? Well, it really depends on your project requirements. Personally, I like using Node MCU for some time already. It's a dev board for ESP8266 module, which has reasonably good capabilities, onboard Wi-Fi and you can get one for around 3 euro, so it's pretty cheap. But if it doesn't match your requirements, or you simply have different preferences, there are a lot of other options on the market, including original Arduino ESP32 or Raspberry Pico board families. You can even use such powerful things like Raspberry Pi if you have such needs. Cool, so we managed to break away from web browser into the real world. Time to find out how we can control some more serious stuff with this tiny electrical signal we have. And that will mostly depend on the type of power supply we need for a particular device. Generally speaking, there are two types of power supplies. DC or direct current, which you can get from batteries, chargers and so on. And AC or alternating current, that's the one in your sockets. Let's cover DC first. In this category, probably the most versatile and cost-effective solution is transistor. Of course, it's such a deep subject that I could make entire series of videos about it. So here I will just outline its most basic possibilities in context of simple DIY. As you can imagine, there are several types of transistors that you can find in all shapes and sizes. But this time we are particularly interested in low voltage and channel MOSFETs. Why this one? Usually microcontroller boards can output 3.3 volts on its pins with maximum current of 10 milliamps per pin. Most of consumers require higher voltage and amperage, but those parameters are just enough to drive such low voltage transistor directly from a pin allowing you to control one or two amps up to transistors rated voltage for just few cents. And that's already much more useful range. You can use it with various power LEDs, small DC motors, solenoid valves and so on. On the other hand, it's pretty low level solution, so still you need at least basic understanding of electronics to make your implementation safe and reliable. Additionally, it's mostly useful for simple scenarios. If you need something more sophisticated, like driving a motor forward and reverse, the level of complexity will quickly raise to such an extent that you will probably like to use something more straightforward. Fortunately, nowadays you can find all kinds of drivers for any typical applications. You can usually get them for just few bucks, so unless you have a very good reason to build such module yourself, they can save you a lot of time and doesn't require deep knowledge. Especially that most of them already have a good community support, so you can easily find some example projects for reference. Sometimes it may happen that you won't even need them. Servos, for instance, comes with built-in drivers, so the only thing you need to be able to set its position is servo library included and configured in your project. Finally, if you just need simple switch on switch off operation, another interesting option is electromagnetic relay. The big advantage of such solution is that it provides galvanic insulation between logic part and power part and galvanic contact between terminals, so you can use it for both DC and AC power supplies, driving current up to several amps, depending on specific version and load type. Their cost is usually between 1 and 3 euro, so they are quite affordable option. Additionally, comparing to any semiconductor based switching solution, their power losses are neglectable, so it might be the preferred option whenever you don't need frequent switching. Because if you do, then that's not the best suited technology, considering its slow reaction time and expected lifetime of around 100,000 operations. On the cons side, it's also worth mention that most relays requires higher switching current than single pin can offer, 
so still you need to use transistor between your board and coil, which adds additional bit of complexity to the project. So what to do if you need frequent switching of AC current? There are a few options here, but if you're looking for something relatively simple and cost effective, then probably the best option will be TRIAC driven by OptoTRIAC. One important disclaimer here. When speaking about alternating current, we usually mean mains voltage. And that is already serious thing, so if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you better stay on safe voltage ranges, because with 230 volts, blowing off your fuses is one of the smallest possible consequences of any mistake. But if you already feel confident with mains voltage, you have two typical configurations here. One is using OptoTriac with built-in zero crossing circuit. I used it in this video to build automation for my hot plate, so you can see such arrangement in details if you like. In short, small electric signal from your board is used here to light up OptoTriac's built-in LED, which activates detector on high voltage side and as soon as AC voltage falls below plus minus 5 volts, Zero crossing circuit triggers small built-in triac, which in turn activates main triac. The advantage of such solution is that you only need two active components, so it's really simple, reliable and cost-effective. In addition, as switching happens only when voltage is crossing zero, it doesn't generate much electromagnetic interference, so it should be fine to use it even with substantial loads like few kilowatt heaters, for example. The obvious limitation here is that you can switch only the entire half waves at most, so it won't work in applications that require phase control, like dimmers, for instance. To allow such fine control, you need an optotriac without zero crossing circuit. Instead, you need to build your own zero-crossing detector, so that your program will be able to find out when it should launch triggering pulses. You can do it in many different ways, but for the lamp you just seen I used such detection circuit, because even though it's not the most precise one, it's pretty simple and just good enough for the job. The biggest issue here, except increased complexity, is that switching the current mid-wave generates a lot of noise to the grid. It shouldn't be a big deal for small devices, especially if used occasionally, but big loads driven this way can cause some difficult to predict issues in the long run. That's just a few ideas on how to control some physical device from web browser. Nowadays possibilities seem endless, especially if you have proper knowledge and budget, so even though I barely scratched the surface, I hope you enjoyed this brief overview. Have fun with your DIY projects and see you on other videos!